Hey guys, I'm Mono and this is a second advanced tactics video for Hello Loose. If you haven't checked out my previous video on advanced tactics, then definitely do so because in that video I go over some really effective strategies, mostly talking about how to predict where the enemy garrisons are going to be and how to properly execute flanks in order to take those garrisons out. In this video, I won't be focusing as much on a single topic like say garrisons, but before I get started, if you want to catch me live and ask me a bunch of questions about Hell or Loose or even play a few rounds with me, then please check me out at Twitch at twitch.tv slash monespacial underscore YT. The link for that will be in the video description. All right, and now let's get started. First tip is to check out the scoreboard and see the amount of enemy armor squads that the enemy team has. This is pretty much mandatory if you're going to be playing armor yourself since you want to know how many tanks you will be facing against. But even if you're not, if you're playing squad leader or you're playing commander, knowing the amount of tanks that are active in the battlefield at any given moment is a huge benefit. Because once you see, let's say, two tanks get spotted and there's only two armor squads, then you know there's no other tanks roaming around anywhere else. Which will allow you, for example, if you're looking to drive a supply truck up to the front line, you know you can do so without running into any enemy recon tanks or light tanks that might be roaming around. This is also extremely useful for not losing matches because if you join Kursk for example and you see the enemy team has three high level armor squads and you only have one or two then you might think about hopping onto armor instead of playing infantry because you're probably gonna lose that if you don't. All right, the next tip is to preset your artillery pieces. What this means is that given there's three different artillery pieces in the headquarters, you can take some time to rotate and aim those guns at specific locations on the map that you will want to fire at some point when the battle eventually reaches that area. So what you can have is you use your main gun to fire at the current position that your, your team is fighting over and then have the other two guns ready to go, loaded and aimed and everything, ready to fire at the next strong point or at a key road or anything else that you might want to fire at during the course of the match. So now you can just jump around the different guns and fire at specific locations without having to do major adjustments in a single gun, but rather doing fine adjustment in each of them. This will save a ton of time and allow you to be much more effective with your artillery. It's also a good idea to go engineer for the first few lives that you'll be using artillery and ask the commander to drop supplies on the artillery so you can build some walls and some fortifications around it so you don't get sniped or at least don't get sniped as easily by the enemy recon team. All right, the next tip is for the commander and unfortunately I don't have the footage of me using this on a foy battle that I played like a couple of months ago. But the idea is that you should drop your airhead straight onto the enemy strong point. And that might seem like the stupidest thing to do because the airhead's gonna get destroyed because the team is there, so they're gonna see it. And as soon as it lands, they're gonna shoot it or grenade it or whatever. But if you time it correctly, you can drop your own bombing run on the airhead, which will not destroy it, but will kill the enemy team. So you can have the bombing run and the airhead land at the exact same time basically killing the entire enemy because they will be going after that airhead and then allowing your airhead to get that free spawn in and basically spawn your entire team onto the enemy strong point with little to no opposition. If you pull this off, if you get one spawn wave in, you are golden. And this goes without saying, but this won't work against experienced teams that have a combined working force of tanks, infantry and commander forces. But this is actually surprisingly effective in most pop matches. I've used this to win a couple of games and I've seen many experienced commanders pull this off. Now, obviously, you have to have some sort of feeling for the enemy opposition, for the enemy defenses on whether or not you'll be able to do this and where to place the airhead exactly in order to pull this off. But I don't think it's as hard as it might sound. And also the other thing that you could do is just drop the airhead on your own team. If there's a full squad that's pushing into the enemy position and they have a good control of the terrain, even if it's just a tiny little building or anything that you can drop the airhead behind. Basically any spot where there's already a squad keeping themselves alive, 
then that's a spot where you can drop an airhead potentially and just have the, the entire team spawn without the enemy being able to destroy that airhead because otherwise that squad would already be dead. All right, next tip is to just use your map markers more often and in different ways. So what I mean by this is most players will use their map markers to mark like, all right, I saw an enemy garrison, so here's a garrison mark, or I saw the enemy infantry, so here's an infantry mark, and so on. However, you can also use your markers for a bunch of other things. For example, I like placing observation and defense marks on friendly garrisons, so that way I can use those markers to measure the distance on the screen and that way I know when I'm at the 200 meter distance that I need to be to build a different garrison just by taking a look at the marker and not necessarily having to look at the map. Other uses include, for example, marking buildings or marking specific locations where you want to shoot at with the tank. Like, for example, locations that you can see on the map that you know there's going to be infantry there because of the way the map is and the layout and where your team is and you wanna shoot at those buildings, but you can't really find them on your screen, so you just mark them on the map with a infantry mark or whatever, and use that to range your, your shot and just shoot at it. I also enjoy using them, for example, to mark different spots on a road, so I know where I need to turn left or where I need to turn right or whatever, and also mark like the end of trench lines that I want to avoid, so I don't get near them, and you know, just a bunch of different things that you can do with them, I've actually started to use them more to communicate with other squad leaders with the place garrison mark and say like, hey, can you guys place a garrison on able place garrison mark or stuff like that? It helps communication and I think we should all use them way more. And lastly, two more tips. One real quick one, if you're playing as commander, do not airdrop supplies onto squad leaders without asking first because I hate it when a commander does that to me because anyone that knows how to play this game even slightly will know to go and destroy enemy supplies when you see them drop. So that is just like a big red marker, a big target on the map that says, hey enemy, this is where we are, please come kill us. So if you have a squad that's been struggling to get into a position to build a red zone garrison or a garrison at the border of the front line or whatever, and you just drop supplies on their head, then you are basically just <laughs> giving a bounty on that squad's head. So let's say they were flanking and facing minimal opposition, then that's gonna change real fast in the next two minutes because the enemy team will make an effort to go and destroy those supplies. All right, and lastly, one that is... <laughs> this is a really overkill tactic, I think, that you don't really need to use ever, but I'll just throw it in there and it has to do with Gary timing. And this, you know, it might be better for the commander to focus on this than squad leaders. But anyway, what you wanna do is you wanna check the map for garrisons and catch the spawn waves of your own team's garrisons. So when you're building a garrison, you wait for that, you see a spawn wave, then you wait 20 minutes and then you place the garrison. And that way you will have staggered spawns on the garrisons around the point so, you know, when somebody dies and they start clicking through the garrisons, they're not all at the same uh, spawn timer. Basically, you know, you click on one, uh, you got 30 seconds wait time. You click on the other, it's 36. You click on the other, it's 25. It's basically the same, right? So if you do this, you will click on one, you'll have, let's say, 20 seconds. And the other one's going to be at 5 seconds. The other one's going to be at 35 seconds. So you will always have this, like, continuous spawn wave going off between all your garrisons and that will just allow your team to have more staying power on uh, whatever region those garrisons are and again this is just severe overkill but i think it's a really cool thing to do if you manage to pull it off a simpler way to do this if you're for example playing commander and you're gonna go build a bunch of garrisons is just look at the time by pressing t at the top of the screen and build the garrisons at different seconds. Basically, you wanna build one garrison at zero, zero, the other at 20 seconds, the other at 40 seconds, and so on. And that should kind of ensure that you will get a relatively good spawn wave chain thing, whatever. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for this video. If you have any other tips that you'd like to share that you might think might benefit other players, then please do so at the comment section down below. 
And as always, thank you for watching and I hope I will catch you in the next one.